Hey, what's going on, everybody? Happy February 1st and happy Thursday. Hope we're having a wonderful start to the day and to the month as well. And uh, it's a short month, so let's try to make sure we get kind of everything we can out of it. I know February is always kind of feels like one of those months you forget it happens, and then, uh, you know, you look back and sure enough, it did happen. But uh, again, February is also a very exciting month because it's kind of getting towards the end of winter a little bit here and uh, kind of starting to begin to think about spring a little bit more as we get towards the end of the month. Now, unfortunately for all of you spring love, I've got some not so great news for you. It's not looking very spring-like here within the next couple of weeks, really, as we have a big-time storm system working on through now, and that will eventually cross the country going into early next week. And then all eyes are on a potential pattern change here, uh, specifically in the East Coast, going into kind of the middle of February that could bring a return to cooler and uh, wetter conditions, which could mean some snow for some folks. And we'll take a look at that here uh, in today's video. Uh, now, I also just want to say thank you. The growth has been great over the past couple of days, and uh, I just woke up today feeling a little extra grateful. Uh, it's really kind of astonishing to me how much this channel has grown uh, since I started it about a year ago, and uh, really within the past couple months especially. The growth has been uh, tremendous, and I feel like I don't really give enough thanks to uh, all of you for uh, everything that you do to really help my life uh, as a whole. So all of you, thank you so much for returning, uh, and especially the returning viewers. Those of you that are here when the weather is slow or exciting, either way, uh, again, uh, really just means a lot to me. And uh, I really can't put into words how grateful I am. So, yeah. Uh, now, with that said, if you haven't already subscribed, uh, definitely consider doing so. Like the video if you like it. And, of course, share it with somebody that you think might find it useful here. Uh, as, again, we do have a lot of impactful weather on the way. Uh, now, with all of that uh, out of the way, let's go ahead and jump right on into your forecast. Uh, now, starting with satellite imagery, things are actually relatively tame right now for the most part. Now, we do have that storm system uh, kind of barreling into the west coast, so we are much more active out west than in the east today. Uh, but that will change over the next couple of days as eventually all this energy slowly slides through kind of the gulf here and then eventually rides uh, kind of through the southeast and potentially even maybe tries to get up the east coast just a little bit. And we'll talk about that possibility later on in the video. Uh, but either way, the storm is definitely going to bring some impacts to a lot of folks. Now, radar-wise right now, again, we're pretty quiet east of the Rockies. We've got some showers moving on through Oklahoma and Texas and even up into Kansas this morning. Nothing too, uh, you know, worrisome that way. We also have another clipper system kind of working through sections of uh, Ontario and Quebec, seeing some snow likely into Quebec City, uh, into Ottawa and Montreal this morning and afternoon. Uh, so definitely watching that. But really, the real active weather is out west right now, where you'll notice we have precipitation stretching from uh, British Columbia all the way down into California here. Uh, again, as this storm system continues to crank up and will continue to kind of uh, work on throughout the next couple of days. Now, watches, warnings, advisories. Again, in the pink, we do have winter storm warnings up for a lot of the mountains of California, Nevada, and then into the four corners. We have uh, flood watches in the uh, kind of dark green. And then in those light green boxes, we already have flood warnings or advisories out for uh, heavy rainfall that has already begun to fall. Then even some winter storm watches up in these blue colors back here into Colorado. So, again, a very active stretch ahead. And then, uh, again, back east advisory-wise, really not all that much to talk about, luckily. All right, let's uh, kind of discuss uh, the weather over the East Coast over the next uh, couple of days, and then we will discuss the uh, overall pattern, and then we'll start with our storm system and go from there. Uh, so this afternoon, again, really the only active weather here east of the Rockies is this clipper system up into Canada. That could definitely bring some light snow showers through Maine, Vermont, and New Hampshire, maybe even a couple snow showers into New York State uh, overnight tonight, but not really too much to uh, kind of write home about here. As we continue through overnight tonight, we could see some rain showers, I think, pick up along the I-95 corridor from D.C. and Baltimore up through Philadelphia, New York City, uh, Hartford, and Providence, and maybe even into the Boston area. Could see a couple of uh, scattered sprinkles overnight tonight by the time we're waking up tomorrow. Uh, but for our Friday afternoon, again, a relatively nice time. This is about 2 o'clock Eastern time, Friday afternoon. Again, mostly quiet. And you'll notice, again, here's that clipper system bringing a little bit of rain along the I-95 corridor and likely some cloud cover as well. But all things considered, uh, you know, a pretty nice uh, Friday afternoon here for our Groundhog Day uh, Friday is. So, you know, definitely uh, watching that. We'll see what uh, Punxsutawney Phil has to say. Maybe he'll run me out of a job. Uh, wouldn't be uh, the first, uh, you know, kind of weather guy that he's run out of a job. So we'll see. Um, but, uh here we go. Now going into overnight Friday into Saturday, this is when our storm system out west really begins to crank up a little bit here. And uh, you'll notice kind of gaining in intensity here over the uh, south central plains. And then again, eventually going into this weekend, we'll kind of move on through the Gulf and then up the eastern seaboard just a little bit. 
Alrighty, temperatures this afternoon are actually going to be quite nice, uh, slightly above average I think for most folks here. These are projected afternoon temperatures, maybe even add a degree or two above this if you get a little, more, a little bit more sunshine than uh, maybe expected right now. But again, a pretty nice day, even getting up into the mid-70s back towards Texas and Oklahoma. So a pretty nice um, Thursday afternoon here. Now going into our Friday morning, again, another above average morning, likely not getting below freezing for most folks, getting near it, but uh, uh, likely more mid-30s, I think, for much of the south and into the mid-Atlantic, into the Ohio River Valley, and even up into much of the northeast with cooler, temp uh, excuse me, cooler temperatures, obviously, up into the Midwest and into the higher terrains. So again, just kind of find your location on the map here, and that's what you can expect for your Friday morning commute. And then going into our Friday afternoon, again, another really nice warm day. In fact, we warm up even more Friday afternoon than this afternoon. Uh, we could be getting up into the middle 60s here through much of the deep south tomorrow afternoon and likely quite sunny as well, I think, for a lot of people. So get out there and enjoy that Friday because, again, we've got a rainy stretch here going into the weekend and into early next week. And as I mentioned, a cooler pattern is looming here going towards the middle of February. So any of these nicer days we get, uh, definitely get out there, enjoy it, maybe go for a walk, uh, maybe go for a run if you're the athletic type and uh, you know just again go get some uh, go get some of that vitamin D all right uh, that is the East Coast uh, over the next couple of days now let's discuss the overall synoptic pattern here and then we'll take a look out west with the storm system track it through the east and then I'll uh, end off here by talking about that pattern change in the long run all right so again, here we go. This is uh, kind of what we're seeing right now. I'm going to move this ahead just a little bit at a time into our Friday afternoon. Uh, there we go. And uh, here we go. Big storm system again, cranking up out west, bringing those uh, showers and uh, snow showers, depending on your elevation, some gusty conditions and some flooding as well. Now, eventually what happens is uh, that storm system kind of begins to cross through the uh, southern Gulf, uh, or not through the southern Gulf, but through the Gulf Coast states, if you will, through the southeastern United States, and eventually here getting into the southeast going into early next week. And now we've been mentioning the chances for snow. Uh, unfortunately for our snow lovers, overnight it's trended even worse. So at this point, we're, we're, excuse me, we're really going to need to do a lot of work uh, to kind of trend this back towards the snowy side. And it's kind of just been getting worse and worse on the trends all week. Uh, so unfortunately, the storm's looking less and less likely to produce any significant snowfall. Now, I'm not going to rule out again somebody could see snow, especially in the higher trains of North Carolina, Virginia, maybe even some backside snow uh, into the eastern Carolinas and Virginia. But even if that happens, impacts would likely be very limited and would just be more of a novelty event than anything else. Uh, so again, that's kind of what we're watching here. Again, storm riding through the southeast. Now, eventually, what could happen that some of our models have been hinting at recently, and this could lead to more of a snowy solution for other people that maybe not, have not quite been expecting it, is right here. This is going into Wednesday. You'll notice the storm now kind of phasing with that piece of energy to the north we've been talking about, and that kind of pulls it northwards here a little bit, up towards uh, coastal um, New England, and should that happen, we could maybe get a little bit of snow down here into, uh, you know, maybe Nantucket, Cape Cod, and uh, kind of those areas that are really sticking out of New England. And we'll watch those trends for sure. Now, another thing I will mention here going into next week, here we go, another storm system working out west. So uh, you folks out west, you're getting the storm system right now. You'll probably get a little bit of a lull in between the two, uh, but don't get too excited because another one on the way right for the middle of next week, and we're going to do it all again. All right, now speaking of that storm, let's go ahead and talk about it. Out west, again, a very wet day, whether that be from snow or rain, obviously depending on your location here, but big time snow falling in the Sierra Nevadas back into the mountains of Nevada and uh, big time rain here into coastal California, especially Southern California today. Now, getting into this afternoon, uh, precipitation should become more scattered in nature. So I think uh, it won't be a washout for everybody, but definitely rounds of rain working on through here. Again, from Washington all the way down to California. And then that mountain snow also working on through here at the same time. Now going into overnight tonight, and by the time that we are waking up on our Friday morning, this storm kind of uh, doesn't break apart, if you will, but the precipitation becomes even more scattered uh, with the real bulk of it now working into the Four Corners region. Again, bringing mountain snow uh, here from Arizona, Utah, Colorado, New Mexico, and up into uh, Idaho and Nevada here, and then rain into those lower elevations. Now, at the same time, we are still seeing rain back towards California, Oregon, and Washington, just much more scattered in nature Friday afternoon than maybe what we saw yesterday or today. And again, that continues here into Friday afternoon, just widespread mountain snow showers uh, with, again, a little bit more isolated lower elevation showers as we have a little bit less topography helping kind of cause some lift there. Now that same general synoptic pattern continues here even into our overnight Friday, and this is midnight Friday into Saturday morning. You'll notice more of the same happening. 
And uh, if we uh, now kind of switch here towards our GFS model, again at the same time, kind of uh, showing a similar picture. Now, by the time we're waking up Saturday morning, I expect a little bit of a lull, uh, not a super big lull, but maybe, you know, less widespread precipitation than what we're seeing right now. Uh, but at the same time, here comes our low pressure now kind of developing at the surface. This could bring a big kind of burst of snow here uh, through Colorado and uh, areas even south of Denver there, kind of uh, south of Denver, north of Colorado Springs could get a little uh, kind of batch of snow out of this as well into some of the foothills of Colorado there. So watching that as well. And uh, you'll see as we go into our Saturday afternoon, again, that storm just continues to crank away, bringing big time mountain snow through Colorado and even up through Yellowstone and into uh, much of Montana as well before eventually, <clears throat> excuse me, and going into our Sunday, here comes another storm system now cranking uh, up and kind of moving inland. And we get another round of very heavy rain through California, as well as uh, some very heavy mountain snow through the same areas. And by the time we're getting to Sunday evening, again, a real washout, a big flooding concern through much of California, big time mountain snow, again, more than feet, uh, kind of, uh, you know, could be counting this in terms of, you know, uh, mounts of three feet at a time. So we could say, you know, three to six feet, six to nine feet. Uh, so again, very big time snow totals here heavy rainfall totals so that continues into Monday afternoon here and then again we get a little bit of a lull I think on Tuesday as that storm system moves through the four corners before another storm kind of cranks up here going into uh, kind of even later on after that so again a very active uh, time here out west and taking a look at some of these rainfall totals again a lot of it on the way especially in California here uh, you'll notice some of these totals into Southern California and I'll mention this is over the next seven days so now through next Thursday afternoon uh, again, this is getting up near half a foot to a foot of rain, not out of the question. So definitely need to watch that here uh, into these sections of Southern California and even up the coast into the bay. Again, could see uh, very substantial rainfall totals. So watching out for that. And uh, snow will also be something we need to watch for here. Again, this is over the next uh, really seven days or so, a little bit more than that maybe. Uh, but uh, again, widespread mountain snow here into the mountains of Idaho. Again, more than a foot of snow, not out of the question in those highest peaks. Same story back towards Yellowstone. Again, a very heavy snowfall amounts. Lesser amounts into Wyoming, excuse me, into Washington and into uh, Oregon, uh, just because we have a little bit less precipitation in general to work with, but still some snow nonetheless. Now, as I mentioned, the real winners here, it's uh, not going to be hard to find right here through the Sierra Nevadas. Again, some of these totals, if I just kind of, uh, you know, uh, zoom in here a little bit and kind of, you know, leave the cursor over some places, 125 inches of snow. Uh, if math serves me correctly, that is um, a lot of snow. I'm trying to think of how many feet that is. Uh, it's not coming to my brain, but let's see, probably about 10 to 11 feet of snow, if, uh, again, my math is correct, uh, which I uh, don't get uh, too excited that it is because I guarantee you I'm not very good at math. Uh, but either way, a lot of snow here. It doesn't really matter whether it's 100 inches or 120 inches. Uh, same general impacts here, again, on these highest mountains through the Sierra Nevadas. And travel also going to be difficult here if you're crossing the mountains uh, through this time period. So, again, make sure you're staying safe should you be traveling through those areas. All right, so now talking about the east, again, unfortunately, I was kind of hoping that we would be talking about some snow out this way, but uh, again, model trends have not been in the right direction, and now we're kind of getting within three to five days of this event, and again, chances have not really gotten any better. So uh, not what you want to see for all the snow lovers out here, but uh, you know, we'll forecast what we're seeing, and as much as I'd love to just make up a snow forecast and it happened, that's not quite how this works. Uh, so here we go. Saturday afternoon, here's our storm system now bringing some uh, rain here through Louisiana, East Texas, Arkansas, Oklahoma, and then up back towards Kansas and Nebraska as the storm system slowly continues to kind of strengthen. Now, by the time we get into Sunday afternoon, the storm now getting along the Gulf of Mexico, and we've got widespread rain through Mississippi, Alabama, southern Georgia, into much of Florida, up into Arkansas, uh, Missouri, and even into Kansas. One thing I will mention that has kind of changed a little bit here is originally this looked like a big washout for much of the southeast. Uh, now, precipitation chances have definitely dropped through Virginia and the Carolinas, specifically North Carolina and Virginia. Uh, as again, uh, earlier, it looked like the storm might be a little further north, might bring a little bit more precipitation further north. Uh, but the latest model runs have really kind of suppressed the storm down a little bit. And you'll notice by the time we're even getting into Monday afternoon, really not any rain has fallen through Virginia, northern North Carolina, Greensboro to Raleigh. Uh, it's more of a kind of Columbia, South Carolina, Charleston, South Carolina, Atlanta, Georgia kind of rain event here. Uh, again, from uh, Sunday through Monday afternoon here. And then eventually, this is when things get a little more interesting. Uh, going kind of into our Tuesday, uh, this is when, you know, this northern stream of energy, this cold air we've been mentioning forever now, and this southern piece kind of slowly begin to phase a little bit. 
And uh, again, that northern piece of energy trying to pull that southern piece northward a little bit here. And into Tuesday afternoon, uh, you'll notice that kind of happens. And sure enough, we get some snow showers out of this here through uh, coastal, uh, coastal Maine and into coastal Massachusetts and into just really coastal New England in general. So, um, you know, that phasing is still kind of showing up. It's just showing up a little bit different than maybe before. Originally, it looked like maybe it'll phase over the Carolinas and Virginia and we can get some snow that way. Uh, but now it's looking more likely to happen kind of out really far offshore, but still close enough that, again, we could get some snow into Massachusetts. You'll see it's still snowing here overnight Tuesday into Wednesday. Still kind of some scattered snow showers out of this. And then eventually, uh, going later on into next week, this is still about a week out, but this storm really cranks up and tries to swing back towards the coast a little bit. And should that happen, uh, we could get a big-time snowstorm, maybe even blizzard out of this into Nova Scotia and portions of coastal Maine. So watching that, uh, it's not set in stone for this to happen, but it's solution that we're definitely going to watch and again we're getting a little bit closer to these two pieces of energy interacting and therefore a little bit better at forecasting exactly what's going to happen all right i think i mentioned but that was the gfs model we'll take a look at our canadian model now again really starts the same this is sunday afternoon uh, really looks identical to the gfs here going into uh, monday i will mention the canadians a little bit further north so it brings that rain a little further north into the carolinas even up into nashville uh, but eventually, same general story, just good old-fashioned rain in the Carolinas before the storm eventually finally kind of works offshore and tries to phase with that northern piece of energy, but just doesn't quite do it. So uh, the Canadian doesn't really have any kind of snow event for anybody, uh, even really the mountains. All right, European model, what does it look like? It's uh, really stuck to its guns here for a while, and it continues that suppressed look, which is kind of looking right now like it might be the winning uh, formula here. Uh, again, over the Carolinas, not that much rain, just kind of some light rain Monday morning here through Greenville, Spartanburg, Columbia, Florence, Myrtle Beach, back towards Wilmington, uh, Savannah seeing some uh, light rain out of this. And again, uh, just like that, it's out of here by Tuesday afternoon. And the European does phase the two pieces of energy, but uh, again, just a little too far offshore. And we don't really see much of anything happening here uh, through really the East Coast at all. All right, now again, I will mention there is a chance this does uh, bring some snow up to the northeast. So let's take a look at that here really quickly. Chance of at least an inch of snowfall. Well, here we go. This is going into next uh, Wednesday and Thursday. Uh, these are the GFS Ensemble members, and you'll notice, uh, yeah, they're picking up on some snow here. Again, especially through the Cape here uh, into Nantucket, Cape Cod, about a 50% chance of snow falling here. Uh, I will mention this is just the GFS Ensembles. The European Ensembles are a little less bullish on this idea. So right now, I'd say maybe about a 20, 30% chance of this happening. Uh, but again, enough this far out that we'll definitely continue to monitor it, monitor it and see what the trends show. Uh, so again, no snow really for the Carolinas, unfortunately, it looks like right now. But uh, maybe Massachusetts and Maine can steal a little bit of that snow uh, so at least somebody can cash in on some wintry weather. All right, one final map I'll show you again. I want to mention this pattern change into February. I know a lot of other YouTube channels have been talking about it a lot. Uh, well, I say that. I know Mitch West has been talking about it a lot. I haven't really checked on anybody else. Uh, but uh, either way, I do want to mention it a little bit now that this uh, snow chance early next week looks to be fading a little bit. Uh, so here we go, into the middle of February. What does it look like? Well, we'll start about February 7th or 8th here, and we've got still a big-time ridge over much of the east. So uh, warmer-than-average temperatures likely to continue here through uh, kind of the start of the second week of February, but it's going beyond that uh, that things change a little bit. That ridge breaks down a little bit, and here we go, troughing kind of returning to the picture here right in the Valentine's Day time frame. Uh, so you'll notice those blue colors now picking up on your map here, uh, again indicating the chance for... Um, you know, some more stormy and below average temperatures. Uh, and then that continues here even into kind of uh, a little bit further into the middle of February. And eventually, this is very far out, but um, we kind of get a connection even from the Arctic here. And that could be a supply of cold air as well as, again, that stormy track. Now, if I take a look at temperatures here, and I'll just pull this up on the fly a little bit. Uh, you'll notice uh, kind of at the same time frame, uh, again, it's going to be above average for a little bit as this ridge holds on. We'll go back below average. This is early next week on the backside of that storm system that we've been talking about. And then again, I think we warm up a little bit here going around the 10th of February before finally getting towards Valentine's Day. Uh, here we go. Those blue temperatures taken back over. And uh, should we continue this active southern storm track? We'll see. Maybe we can get something cooking. Um, unfortunately, though, this winter, it feels like we've had plenty of great patterns that uh, just, uh, you know, have definitely delivered for some folks, just not here in the Carolinas. So I'm a little biased. It feels like they haven't worked out. But I mean, we've seen plenty of snow back through Arkansas, Tennessee, uh, Texas, Louisiana, northern Mississippi. Uh, and uh, even up into sections of the Northeast, definitely a snowier winter than last. 
Uh, so we'll definitely, uh, you know, continue to monitor the pattern here and see if anything changes. Alrighty, well, with that said, I hope you all have a great rest of your Thursday. It is a wonderful start to February, and I'll see you all tomorrow.